This is the story of three old and fat men riding motorcycles across the Trans-America Trail. This episode begins on day 13. And for Don and Richard, this was a good day to recover from the past 13 days of riding down long, hot, and dusty roads. After 1,400 miles, this seemed like a good day to relax in the cool and magnificent wonders of the Alpine wilderness, just outside Silverton, Colorado. One of these men will take a day off, as the other two take advantage of a lighter load on their motorcycles to wander around and explore the San Juan Mountains. We join them as they embark on their short adventures, separately. All right, hanging out here at Secret Camp Yellow High Viz, outside of Silverton. Don left early this morning, went in, and he, I'm assuming he's doing some work at the library. John just went for a walk, and I'm sitting here doing nothing, so I thought I might do this. I think we're going to do a little ride and a couple things we're going to do this afternoon, hang out here for another day, and then get headed back. Uh, still seems like we're heading a weird direction out of here, but generally we'll be heading west, so uh, that'll be the update. Don't have any mileage yesterday. Not really sure what we did yesterday. It wasn't that long. It was fun. Had a lot of fun, especially doing a cinnamon pass. Uh, not too sketchy at all. How is it there's sun over my head and I'm getting rained on? Hope it's not a heck of words words. Anyway, this is what I'm watching. Doesn't that motorcycle look so lonely sitting out there by itself? Such a shame. But the other two boys got on their motorcycles. They went in search of a lake. They went riding without me. Actually, I got here just in time and uh, they invited me. I was like, man, I'm, I'm tired because uh, I, just, I just spent four and a half hours in town in the library making videos for you savages to watch because I know y'all are you can't be satisfied with one a day. I've got to make four a day. So I went ahead and made four videos and I'm gonna stack them up and schedule them anyway. As you can see, I'm soaking wet because I just took a shower in that ravenous creek there. But I did a smart thing. I wanna share with you my technique. I've probably shown it to you before, but this is what I do to make sure that I'm not freezing to death. Well, that, that water's probably, I don't know, 45, 50 degrees. It's very cold. But what I do is I fill that dry bag full of water and I hang it on a tree. But before I hang it on a tree, I sit it out in the sun for most of the day. In this case, up until about four o'clock. So I left this morning about, I don't know, 8.39, something like that. I just sat it out on one of these rocks and uh, laid it in the sun. And probably got it up to about, I don't know, it's probably 65 degrees. Still chilly, but not 45, so big difference. Yeah, you stick your feet in there and see how long you can hold your feet in there. So I had a good body wash. Tonight's the live stream. Hope everybody's going to show up for this, because you're probably not going to see this for weeks or months. Excited to be back in uh, Silverton. Uh, the lows are in the low 40s at night, so it's kind of chilly. Been struggling a little bit with my... Uh, with my blackbird, my war bonnet, and it's under quilt. Um, I haven't perfected that yet. That's it, that's my update. I told the boys to make fun of me uh, while they were out there and called me a sissy for not wanting to ride today. I'm just tired, man. I just need a day off, and uh, I'm gonna talk to uh, I'm gonna talk to Richard about maybe having another one, just, just to catch your breath and enjoy the scenery. Um, I know it's important to me uh, it, it was very important to me last year. I probably overdid it last year. I probably sp spent too much time in camp, a week, two weeks. Finding really good spots like this is hard. The only problem with this spot is all this traffic up here stirring up the dust. And somebody, somebody eventually falls down here on you. And apparently since Gary left a few days ago, there's flies all over the place. Explain that, Gary. There wasn't flies here last year. You know there wasn't. There was mosquitoes, but there was the flies. What'd you do, Gary? Gary, what'd you do? Is that why you left? You made too many flies? Gary, I'm coming for you. 
This area of Colorado is highly prized for its amazing scenery and epic roads, both paved and dirt. The dangers surround you in these sphincter-tightening curves, with sheer drops on either side of the road into canyons hundreds of feet below. We now join John and Richard as they try to find their way to a mountain lake well above the tree line at around 10,000 feet. But first, I would like to mention the sponsor of this video, Uncle Billy's Bug Nuggets, offering a taste of the great outdoors, but more about them later in the video. As we return to the riders in the middle of their ascent, we see John out front stirring up all the dust as they blaze their way up this narrow county road. What you don't see is the number of turns they missed and the number of times they reversed course, like a bunch of cats chasing their tails. Luckily for you, the editor cut all that chaos out. Bottom line is, none of these a-holes can navigate for shit. Despite using thousands of dollars worth of state-of-the-art GPS electronics, I think all three are profoundly retarded. Maybe it is simple senility or Alzheimer's. Nevertheless, they do finally make it up to the hiking trail at the lake. And these switchbacks can be profoundly treacherous for any driver, but especially motorcycles. You must not only be very accurate with your turns, but you must also master throttle and clutch control while maintaining traction and your balance. Switchbacks are very underestimated when it comes to danger, mainly because of their location, almost always on a very steep slope and very narrow paths. But this time, all the effort paid off. I'm assuming this is it. No, it could be. It's really not far at all. How much further is it? Three quarters of a mile? Oh! Do you hear that? He says we're probably going to run into snow. Well, we can't make it to the lake. You want to go take a look? I'm good right here, man. It's also it's twenty to quarter to five. I know that's my problem. All right, well let's just hang here. Let's look at the waterfall. Then we'll head back down. Headed to the town for the live stream. Kind of, I like the, uh, I like the kind of day in the life thing. Probably should do much more. I don't know, what do you think? You think, uh, I mean, this is kind of like the essence of what a blog is. And I have been told that uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm blogging, but I just have always hated that. Hated that uh, term, especially when you're trying to tell a story. It's something, something that just doesn't uh, ring. When you say blog, here's what I did today. I think, at least I try to do more than that with my videos. It is one of the. The easiest thing to do to tell you, oh, I went to the store and I bought some stuff and I went to the thing. That's got to be the easiest story to tell. Here's a record of my day. A log. A blog. A blog. But, telling a story is much more difficult as I have 
found out over the last year or two, trying to tell the story. And what I've discovered is the best thing to do is don't try to tell the story while you're recording. Don't do that. Re record the activity and then later come back after you figured out what the freaking story is. What was the story? What is the story? Like, for example, we're going, we're leaving camp, we're going about four miles into Silverton. And we're gonna do a live stream. What's gonna happen? I have no idea. Well, I do have an idea because I've done enough streams to know kind of what, what happens on live streams. I mean, it's a little chaotic to be honest, but um, you know, as a general measure, I kind of know, you know, we're gonna talk about what we've been doing, what we've seen, uh, maybe a little bit about what we've learned and Damn, could have parked in a mud hole. Oh, he's moving good. He just stopped. Let me by. Well, of course he wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna sacrifice his tires. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, for some reason, I'm a little bit on edge. I think I'm gonna try a little bit of uh, a little bit of the devil's lettuce tonight. That's uh, since since we're in Rome. See if that maybe calms me down a little bit. We shall see, as long as this lady doesn't try to run over me again. Everybody wants to take a picture of this little water ball. I don't think there's anything special about it. I think there's a culvert above it even, which is even funnier. All right, we got a dog, a guy running his dog, which is kind of cool. I think his dog's getting tired. I think Puppy is getting tired. Probably his feet are hurting from running all over these jagged rocks. Oh, no. he's. He's picked up his speed. He's picked up his pace. Ah, they're going down another trail. That's pretty cool. It's good to have a companion. It's good to have a companion when you ride your bike, doing your little activities. Kind of rough operating this camera and ride at the same time it's a little bit uh a little bit tricky you don't want to run off that just because you're fixing your camera look at all these people coming up coming down the front it's been very trafficy today since they moved that uh dead inside now would you look at that magnificence you got the river over here you got these snow-capped mountains. You got these huge, immense valleys covered in, in trees. It's just a miracle. It's amazing. Compared to everybody else's landscape, this is kind of where I want to be. Uh, the, the idea that struck me earlier was Everybody that has joined me on this ride so far, everybody that has joined me on this ride has found me on YouTube. I don't know what to call them. I, I think uh, some of the words may be offensive. But, you know, I've said, I've said subscribers, I've said viewers, I've said followers. But the bottom line is they found me on YouTube. But I continually find it odd that the people that come hang out with me that found me on YouTube know what I do and yet they're uncomfortable being on camera. It's just, it's just funny. It's like, you know what I do? And yeah, you say, nah, or you're just uncomfortable. And I, I guess I should assume that everybody is somewhat uncomfortable on camera and I should just assume, but it's like, I don't know, a piece of me says, you know, everybody should be coming in here and going, yeah, yeah, I want to be in the movie. I want to be in that movie. I want to be in Don's show that uh, that that he puts on YouTube. I want to be I want to be hanging out with Don, doing the things that he does, and you know, I want to be part of that movie. I would think that that would be the the reaction of everybody, and it's usually only a handful. A handful like Richard, who's who's has no problem being a ham. 
I think he could spice it up a little bit, be a little bit more hammy, like me. Like, don't give a fuck. Because he, he, he gives this much of a fuck. I wish he gave no fucks, like me. Anyway. Downtown Silverton. You've seen it before. I shot my first video down here in 2011. My first big loop around the U.S. I never even made it to the West Coast. But I had limited time. I think I had like two and a half, three weeks, something like that. I lost a lot of money. I was running my business at that time. I was making good money. So taking three weeks off lost me a lot of money. So it was a very expensive trip. But it changed my life. But this is the one of the most memorable places that I visited was Silverton. I had the surrounding San Juans. It's just amazing around here. And, and that's all I got to say about that. And that's all I have to say about that. I'll stop in here at the general store and try something, try a new technique. I'm gonna try something new, see how it goes. All right, Don wanted to stay back in camp and fight flies and did not want to come on his ride. Oh, he missed out on all of this. Wasn't too spicy of a ride up here. Hope you can see up ahead of us, snow, road turns to snow. We were trying to get up to an alpine lake that's right up there. You can see the waterfall is coming down, but snowed in got about 45 minutes to get back for the live stream so we're not gonna make it but i want to let everybody see it right here what a great ride me and john made it that's all i'm gonna say me and john made it so easy a one-legged man can do it peace it appears that the moto giant fancies himself a bit of an auteur or at least a cinematographer ha in reality, he is simply another a-hole with an action camera and too much time on his hands. But to be fair, he does find a few locals that are more interesting than everyone else in his filthy caravan, which is why we are leaving it in. Please enjoy the normal people inside the market. We, we're out at the moment, but we'll be we'll making it. What else you got? That's what I'm asking. Oh, right now. So meat, cheese. For, oh, for me? Out. For me? You're open for me? That's what that running was all about. Tell me that's 269 only. Ah, uh, the tax is 290. I'll take it. <laughs> but at least it's like actually. No, I, I, was hope, I was hoping it was going to be $4 or something, you know? Alright, so this, that would just be all together 587. Do you want a small bag? I don't know what I'm, This is going on my handlebar, so... <laughs> oh, this is all going on the handlebar? What did I do wrong? Oh! I thought you meant handle, the restaurant handlebar. My bad, you meant... Oh, you were going to charge it to the restaurant? I was oh, going to charge it to the close. restaurant. This is <laughs> Sorry, it freaked me out for me. I was like, wait. I was like, okay, I get like, it. Yeah, I've never seen anybody do that before. Hey, yeah, I know. Sorry. Use that. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> that. That's pretty funny. Now, can I make it to? Can I make it to the library without spilling my drink that I just paid almost three dollars for? Woo! Let's find out, shall we? Meanwhile, up on the mountain around 11,000 feet up, we find the boys descending back towards Silverton and the library to join Don on the scheduled live stream. The descent is almost as hazardous as the climb up, as you must traverse the very same switchbacks as before, only this time, braking is the most important skill to have. Combining all your attention towards a focus on turns and braking at the same time, while keeping the wheels turning. That is to say, traction is even more important on the way down, as momentum can be a real issue and may even push you over the edge.
Luckily, Richard had enough forethought to ensure he captured the pea break on the way down the hill. Woo! I mean, it does tell a story, right? At least he is keeping it family friendly. So, I guess we will never know if Richard actually has two legs after all. Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain. Puts the lotion in the skin. Or else it gets the house again. See, now here we go to the library. The live stream going to be a few minutes early. Like 27 minutes early, which means I can crunch on some... Uh, Pour skins and drink some Diet Dr. Pepper. Library. That's what we say in Alabama. We go down to the library. Oh, be fine. Fine and dandy. Thank you. That's Richard. Hello, boys! You don't appear to be bleeding from any orifices, so everything went fine. No orifices were involved. <laughs> uh, uh, say hello to the boys, everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this drama unfold while the boys get undone. And uh, Richard brought a chair, I brought a chair. The key off, for some reason. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing how he dismounts his bike. If I had to dismount like that, I would not ride a motorcycle. I could not. I would not Woo! be able to do it like that. He just holds the bike up and just pulls the pulls the dangly part off. And um, every once in a while, Kevin's diverges for some reason. Sometimes it's an easier route or something like that. Um, but yeah, most of it's like so far 95, 98 percent. I feel confident saying that high 90. Absolutely. Yeah, so there's no, you know, this is what we need every freaking day, like every hour. We need this to knock down the freaking dust. Comments? I agree. Mr. Helmet Head? Mr. Helmet Head says, yeah. Mr. Dusty Helmet Head. Oh, man, that's a. Oh. Wow. I would call this a squall. Right at the end of the live stream. I mean, we got through perfect timing. Otherwise, we'd have to snatch everything and run up the stairs. Rainbow. Rainbow. Oh my God, a double rainbow. <laughs> oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's a double rainbow. Whoa, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, it's, oh my God. Woo! Oh, oh, wow! Woo! Yeah! Oh, full on double rainbow all the way across the sky. Double rainbow. It's a double rainbow. Oh, wow. It goes all the way over the city. Look at that. Yeah. Woo! Double rainbow. I don't want to be the double rainbow guy. When I shot the double rainbow video, I was alone in my front in my house. I was not on drugs. It was not a sexual experience. I'm not a Colorado resident, but a summer, a summer rain. This is kind of, is this normal? Normal, yeah. I could deal with this every day, every stinking day. Except when I'm wearing my the clothes that I'm sleeping in and not freezing in. You would think. You would think. But what what am I wearing until then? Because these are the only long pants that I brought besides my mesh gear. So. Oh, 
100 plus years old. I love this town. As the three idiots packed up and headed back to camp, the double rainbow became even more remarkable than before. Perhaps one of the brightest rainbows ever seen on Earth. The light stretched all the way across town and seemed to end up right in the middle of camp. But that was not even enough to give Mr. Funny Man a bit of reverence for the moment. It's a double rainbow! Oh my God! <laughs> Nevertheless, the trio rode on into the evening and back to camp. After returning to camp, the Moto Giant began to prepare dinner for the team. It sure would have been much easier to open up a bag of Uncle Billy's Bug Nuggets, which just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. Tell us all about it, Uncle Billy. As soon as I saw these celebrities getting in on the bug eating craze, I knew there had to be lots of money to be made off these commies. So I started having dinner parties and invited the commie idiots over and they never did figure out that I was replacing food with roaches and crickets. So I kept on going to see how far I could take it. That is, until one of the diners died from dysentery. I knew I had to change the recipe into something less deadly. Is this work to make what's called artificial meat? Do you eat it as well? Or do you like it? Absolutely. Well, he's dead, so... Uh... You know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, and, you know, I've said I regretted having those dinners. Uh, Eat my bug nuggets because it's the right thing to do for the environment. Oh, hi, Klaus. And they really don't taste that bad. I am your Uncle Billy, and I know what is best for you, damn it. Uncle Billy, he knows what is right for you. Buy a case of bug nuggets for your next motorcycle camping adventure to get a taste of the great outdoors because Uncle Billy knows what's best for you. Sausage for everyone. And guess what else we got? We got a little bell pepper. And this is not it, because this is the evil shit. Got bell Jalapeno. pepper. Jalapeno. Jop, Jop's going in the Cajun sausage. Is that, that's what y'all told me it was. It is Cajun. So we got Cajun sausage with some heat, some added heat. If I can find the bell pepper, I'm gonna put it in there too. A little bit red bell pepper. Ooh, some Cajun spice. Ooh, very nice. Ooh. And we got a big green penis. Yeah, we're not, that's not going in here tonight, but, uh, you know. What, what are you going to do with that later? It, hey, if y'all hear a, oh, oh, oh. I can't know hear anything. That. The river drowns it all out. Thank <laughs> even the birds. Even if Wade was here. I may wake y'all up with it. Woo! <laughs> And we've got, uh, we've got a little bit of herbal flavoring going in from the trees, dropping the needles down in here. It's a silkworm being dropping in, a little protein. Yeah, the earth I'm thinking these are spruce, but I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not a campfire, but it's close enough. These are gummies in the beginning? Nope. Cooking meat over fire. Banana, cream. It's very primitive. Whatever. <laughs> call it shit, what they call it. Well, the Somalians were having a good time there, weren't they? So this is all keto friendly. And the scraps go to the fishes. Your plate, sir. Thank you. A squirrel's back. It's what? A squirrel's back. He smells what's cooking. He knows what's good for him. And what's good for him is some good cage all spice. Woo! In the next episode, 
As the trail falls apart on California Pass and communication completely dissolves, tempers flare to the breaking point. And you talk to me I'm like in a, a bit. bad spot and I can't move. You haven't offered to help, so what the fuck? Don't miss the drama and intrigue as the fellowship of the trail disintegrates. Catches on anybody, he's gonna stop. And do it. That's, that's what I. That's what I was really confused about. Like, another time when I, when I did follow.